What's up, good people? Today I'm going to show you why structuring of a policy matters. Now, in this particular example I'm showing you is a 30-year-old female that's putting in $10,000 per year in her whole life policy for 30 years. And I'm going to show you how that policy could look different based on how you structure and design it. You structure it for max funding for higher cash value or you structure it for a high death benefit. So I'm going to show you how those two look different using that same, no extra money, the same money, but works differently for you based on your goals. All right, so let's dive into it. Let's have fun. So a regularly designed policy for the death benefit is going to look like this, okay? So remember we're saying we're going with $10,000 per year uh, for 30 years. So a 30-year-old female, first year she has no cash value and she has a death benefit of like over a million dollars, right? High death benefit. So that's going to buy you a lot of death benefit. Now, a lot of times when people talk about uh, life insurance and they're comparing it with investment, which is a huge mistake, they're always saying, uh, I'm not getting any cash value. Uh, they're forgetting that if you die and you pay $10,000, you're getting over a million dollars in death benefit. There is a cost for that. That costs money. It's not free, right? So you can't compare it to an investment because investment doesn't have that death benefit element, right? So zero cash value in the first year. Uh, the, the fifth year, uh, now that's a little better. They got 27 thousand dollars 691 in cash value over a million one in death benefit year number 10 uh, they've got eighty four thousand dollars so that same person would say hey 10 years I'm putting in money I put in a hundred thousand I only have eighty five thousand I could do much better in the market again the market doesn't give you death benefit to have this amount of cash value and still have that amount of death benefit, you paid 100 k into your policy and your beneficiary get $1.15 million. That's a lot more. That's more than 10 times what you paid in that they'll receive. Okay? So, again, you can't compare it to an investment because the cash value is lower. You are paying for death benefit. All right? So, let's continue. Year number 20... Uh, they got 261 796 much better now right they have more cash value than the premiums they pay plus they have 1.3 in death benefit so they can utilize that 261 in cash value if they die they would have paid 200,000 in their policy their their beneficiary get 1.3 million okay let's continue to number 3 30 years policies done funding they got 5 59 328 okay so you put in over 30 years 300,000 you have in cash value to use um, 559,000 not bad not bad right and if you died your beneficiary got 1.6 million you put in 300,000, your beneficiary buy, get 1.6 million. Okay, so uh, year number 40. Let's look at year number 40. 874, 847. Notice what I have here in year number 40, 300K. That's because the Premium is done paying after 30 years. Remember I said that. So what we did we is, is that we executed what's called a reduced paid up. So after 30 years, in year 31, the cash value that was there, I used that to buy whatever death benefit is that's going to give me so I don't have to pay any more premiums. And then it's good. The policy is just going to work on autopilot from there on. I'm done paying. I'm going to get a reduced death benefit, which is why over here in year 40, notice at year 30, I had 1.6 million in death benefit. Here in year 40, 1.5, right? 1.55 um, in death benefit because I use my cash value 
and paid for the death benefit that that cash value bought me in one single shot and got a reduced death benefit. All right, and then my cash value is going to keep growing. Now it's at 874. In year 50, my cash value is 1, 3. Look how big my cash value is getting. The power of compounding interest. 1.35 million in cash value and in death benefits. So look at this. $300,000 only was paid into that. And the more I live, the longer I live, my cash value is growing and my death benefit is rising. So my heirs is going to get 1.896, I would say 897 million when I die over here. Putting 300,000, get 1.897 million, all right? So let's look at the max funded. So again, zero to start in cash value here. How this is different, we're putting in the same $10,000 in year one over here. Let's see what we've got. In year one over here, we've got 84, 8,000. 409. Big difference, right? But well, look, look at our death benefit, much less. So we are minimizing our death benefit and maximizing our cash value. Structure matters. The same $10,000, nothing changed but the way we structured it. Minimizing our death benefit, maximizing our cash value. So now we have more cash value up front which should make those people who like to compare life insurance with investment happier, more cash value. So that's the second thing they don't understand. So they don't know what they're talking about when they say whole life is a scam or don't do whole life, whatever. So the first thing that they don't understand is that don't compare life insurance with investment. The second thing they don't understand and they don't know about is that you can design the policy to work different. So it doesn't take 15 years to break even. It could take more like five to seven years to break even because you're structuring it to maximize your cash value where most of your premium is going towards cash value like it's different here. Difference between zero and 8409. In year, in year five, now we've got over here in year five, 48. 356. Over here we had 27, here we got 48. In year 10, 1, 110, 520. So in year 10, we have well over 100,000. In this particular policy, we break even between years 6 and 7. All right, so. Um, Year 10, we had more, more cash value uh, than we have it, that we put in premium, and our death benefit is start to rise. Why is that? You might ask, why is my death benefit going up here? It goes up in both, because when we structure these policies, earlier on, we're blending whole life with term. Right? It's a permanent policy. So we are paying with some of our money with our paid up additions. Okay, as our cash value grow and we get dividends, we're doing paid up additions and we're buying additional insurance to meet our MEC limit. And in our earlier years, we can use term insurance to make that, to get that MEC limit, to get that insurance because you got to have a certain, it's still life insurance. You got to have a certain amount of death benefit uh, with the premiums you're paying based on your age your gender, your health conditions, and all that kind of stuff, how you are rated. So you still have to have insurance. You can't just put dump everything in cash value. You have to buy a certain amount of insurance. But we're minimizing it here. But we could also use term insurance to blend with our whole life so we're not spending too much money on whole life. So in our earlier years, we're buying up more terms. So our death benefit is going to keep going up. Right, And as our cash value increases and catches up to our death benefit, our death benefit is also going to increase because we have more dollars. We, we have more dollars to buy more. Okay, Hopefully that makes sense. So in year 20, 
in year 20, we've got 289, 289, 616 in cash value. In year 30, we've got 579, 751 in cash value. In year 40, we've got 906, 906, 795. And in year 50, we've got 1.4. Let's, let's do 1.4 mil in cash value. Okay, so notice here that even though we started off with a much higher death benefit here in our regular policy and our higher cash value, look down here at the death benefit. We're st we did the reduced uh, paid up also over here. If you look, you'll see... Um, here, 1.6, 1.559. So it actually turns out more in the long run here. You still get even more death benefit here in the long run, even though we started out with less. So structuring matters. These policies, the outcome is different, even though you're funding it with the same amount. One started out with a lot more cash uh, death benefit using the same amount because you're paying for more death benefit. That is front loaded with the death benefit uh, with no cash value in the first year. One started out with a minimum death benefit, the minimum that you can get away with without making it a mech and where you would pay taxes. And you maximize your cash value. You have 8,400 cash value there, right? But in the long run, this still, because it, it's pumping in so much money, that could buy you more cash value, that could buy you um, more death benefit, right? Uh, as the death benefit, as the cash value grows up, the death benefit actually uh, grows with it as well. And the great thing is that the cost of insurance is still going to be less because you are going to be responsible for your net amount at risk, which is the difference between your death benefit and your cash value. So in this case here, your cash value is 900,000, your death benefit is 1.6 million, your net amount of risk is over 7,000 right there. That's what you're responsible for in insurance, okay? The difference between your cash value and your death benefit. So the cost is still not gonna be a lot. So again, people who don't know about life insurance, who just talk about stuff, the fees and whatever, they don't understand how it works. They don't understand structure. They don't understand how to design it to minimize your, your, your costs and your death benefit, which costs a lot of money, and maximizing your cash value so there's more cash working into your policy to make it work and function better and also lowering your costs later in your years where most time with life insurance, as you get older, it's cost more. Here, it's going to cost less due to the fact that we're only responsible for the net amount at risk. We are using our cash value to self-insure us to a certain point. All right? So hopefully that makes sense. So structuring matters. Two different types of uh, design, two different outcome, same funding. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Hopefully... Uh, you do understand if there's something that wasn't clear, please, please leave the, leave the comment section, ask the question, uh, ask for clarification. I'll be more than happy to do that for you. And as always, if you find the content valuable, find the information valuable, make sure you let me know that by giving me a like. That's the only way the channel can move forward is if you like the video so I can produce more content and show you more. Uh, also, share it with someone that you may think uh, that could uh, benefit from it. And if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe now and hit the notification bell so whenever we release a video, you're one of the first to be notified. Before I go, I want to share one last thing with you. Everything I just discussed and more is in my book that's now available on Amazon, Get Your Life Together. 
everything that you need to know as a consumer or a uh, pretty new agent is in this book. Everything you need to know. So take action, get it. I'll leave it in a link for you. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys soon.